gaffer. Morning, gents. You left your keys in ignition. I know, I always do. With a bit of luck, somebody might nick it. It's Rick, isn't it? <laughs> Harry, the gaffer wants to see you. Well, he's not getting it back. <laughs> Blunt bombshell says you wanted to see me, gaffer. Yeah, I'm afraid I do. Uh, sit down. Rick. Can I see a cup of tea? Did Betty make it? No, of course. No, thank you. <laughs> You've got no spirit of adventure. That's your trouble. Right, then. What's the problem? The problem is, Harry, I'm afraid I'm being pressurised to uh, send you to pastures new. Do you mean I'm to be given a golden arm lock with nothing but my redundancy pay and the loan of a security car van? <laughs> I'm afraid it's a bit more worse than that. I've got to promote you. Promote me? That's right. You were to be the new works manager. Start of the minute you come out of your faint. <laughs> Gaffer, you must have gone out of your tiny abacus. Harry, you got no more choice than I had. The irascible force has ganged up with the irreducible object. Come again? Your missus and mine. <laughs> Those two bastionesses of the Conservative Coffee Club have joined forces. What do you mean? Well, I'm afraid our wives uh, feel that it doesn't really sound right for the lady president to refer to the madam chairperson as the wife of my husband's shop steward. So, you are now a management lad by order. But, I mean, I was just in my way in to see you with a legitimate industrial complaint in my capacity as shop steward. Well, you're the manager. Go and deal with it. <laughs> just make sure that any compromise you reach is I have biased heavily in my favour. You're going to just carry on as shop steward at the same time? Harry, if your wife or my wife asks, then you are the new manager. But if you want to moonlight as a shop steward, it's no concern of mine. Nice crackers. I shall have to confront myself across the negotiating table shouting, this place is not big enough for the one of me. <laughs> That's a funny picture, that. You know what you want to do, don't you? You want to be shop steward in the morning, then at 12 o'clock change your hats and be the works manager. That way you won't meet yourself officially. <laughs> oh, I couldn't do that. That would be two jobs. I'm not expecting you to do it for nothing. Hoping, yes, expecting, no. And what had you in mind? Well, I'll work out some sort of production bonus. You'll do all right. I and so will you, because anything I demand in the morning at Shop Steward will turn down in the afternoon in case it interfered with my bonus. Never thought of that. Oh, yes, you did. You know me too well. <laughs> OK, I agree, providing it is kept a strict secret. If anybody tells anybody, Harry, it'll be you, Jimmy. <laughs> Haven't I seen that face somewhere before? I beg your pardon. No need to beg. Your wish is my command. Then why haven't you gone there? Can I help you, Mr... I'm Albert. Well, I'm fussy, so you just stay right there and keep your remarks to yourself. Uh, now then, Albert... Uh... Ross! I beg your pardon? Albert Ross! Doesn't that mean anything? A large unlucky bird? <laughs> well, play your cards right and you could be a small lucky one. Do you mind telling me exactly what your business is? Haven't you been warned of my coming? I'm afraid I'm not religious. <laughs> I'm coming here to work! I was told to see the manager. Is he here? There's no such animal. You mean the gaffer? Oh, no, I don't. I've seen the gaffer. She said to see the manager. She said? Did you say she? Yeah, Mrs. Moffat. Oh, Mrs. Moffat. For one awful moment, I thought he'd started taking the tablets. But we still don't have a manager. Well, Doris said you had. Uh, she's my cousin, actually. And she said, see, Mr. Campbell, the manager. Harry Campbell? Did I hear someone checking my name in pain? Mr. Campbell? Oh, well, let's not be formal, friend. It's just Brother Campbell, senior shop steward at Moffat Engineering. Oh, I thought you were the new manager. You take a memo to the gaffer. It wasn't me. I didn't tell anybody. Oh, Harry, this is Albert, Mrs. Moffat's cousin. Oh. oh. Oh, Mrs. Moffat's cousin. That's right, Brother Campbell. And Doris said to see you about a job. So, exactly what are you? 
Well, I, I, I have to sort of double up, you know. I do a quick change at 12 o'clock. It's all these government cuts. <laughs> well, I've been in the movement all my life and I've never heard of a free enterprise shop steward before. Well, they all live and learn, don't we? <laughs> I think this whole business requires close investigation. In the meantime, uh, speaking solely as the um, boss's wife's cousin, do I get the job? What, with a birth certificate as a reference? Who am I to argue? Start tomorrow at the crack of ten minutes late. We would not want you to feel lonely. <laughs> Great. Well, I'll see you tomorrow then, gorgeous. And save yourself for me. It's double stamp day. <laughs> gorgeous? His bifocals must need double glazing. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Now, what's with all this fairy tale stuff? What fairy tale? Well, all this Cinderella lark. Scruffy shop steward suddenly transformed into high-powered business executive at the stroke of twelve. Mind you, I bet fairy godmother Moffat is up to his wand in this somewhere. Has the gaffer not come in? No. He phoned earlier to say that he was taking Mrs. Moffat out for the day, now that he had a deputy. I wonder what he meant. You mean... He won't be in at all. Only Mrs. Moffat's bad books. What are you talking about? When she finds that her big day out is to the machine tool exhibition. He just couldn't resist two free tickets from Kamikaze Engineering and the promise of a bottle of two-week-old Glen Tokyo behind the stand. <laughs> so, until tomorrow, Mr. Manager, the problem is all yours. Politically speaking, it places me in a very embarrassing situation. Morning, buddy. Morning, Mr. Shop Steward. <laughs> and what time of day do you call this? Big pardon. Just strolling in here at 11.30 as if you owned the place? <laughs> Has there been a takeover during the night? <laughs> That was a nice thing you did, wasn't it? Taking a day off without warning. Oh, yes, leaving me knee-deep in the nitrates. Up to here and, and, and red face. Would you like to translate some of this and tell me what I've done? He didn't warn us about Cousin Albert's. That's what you've done. That two-faced left-wing pseudo-intellectual hasn't turned up already, has he? Only asking to see the works manager, who should be nameless, because you forgot to tell me it was Harry. Why didn't you tell us Albert was coming? I didn't know myself until Doris sprang it on me at the tools exhibition. She suddenly said that with Harry being promoted, the reason for which is becoming increasingly obvious by the second, because he'd been promoted, we were a man short, so she told her cousin Albert to apply for the job. I was so surprised I backed onto a lathe. That must have given him a nasty turn, eh? <laughs> yes. Who's her favourite cousin? But their public opinion polls apart. She's true blue rin story, and he's as red as an embarrassed robin. What could they possibly have in common? I don't know. They probably went to different universities together. She, she used to be potty about him when they were younger. They were, they were engaged to be married at uh, one time. You can't marry your own cousin, can you? Of course you can. He's her second cousin twice removed. <laughs> Might have got him make it the hat trick. You can say that again. I think it could be trouble. Don't worry, Betty. I'll find some way of not setting anyone. Look, Gaffer. I'll, uh, I'll tell Doris it's the fault of that Jewish fellow who does all the arrangements between the TUC and the Labour Party. Solomon Binding. <laughs> Gaffer, would you listen? You're too late. Albert started this morning. What do you mean? He's working here already? I didn't actually say that. Since he clocked on, his tongue's been in piecework and his backside's been in a guaranteed week. <laughs> We're not having outsiders doing that. We've got to get rid of them in quick. We? Well, I, I mean, I can't be involved because of Doris, but it shouldn't be any trouble for Harry. What, me? Well, you're the shop steward. Tell the lads to send him to Coventry. Then his works manager, tell him you've got to sack him because the others won't work with him. You know? <laughs> need an excuse to do that. Well, nick his union ticket and then call for a card check. I'd never get me take his jacket off. Why not try turning the heating up from AC to Stone Cold? There's no need to go to extremes. Look, just play it by ear, Harry. You'll think of something. All right. I've just thought of something. Why am I doing this? Because. Oh. <laughs>
to do with this inquiry? You don't have tech chances. <laughs> What's it for? Fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers? Yeah, tell them we're not interested. Last time we had one of them, it burst into flames. <laughs> uh, Harry, are they, uh, have they sent him to Coventry? How would I know? They had already sent me to Coventry before <laughs> I got there. <laughs> Well, they can't do that to a shop steward. Oh, yes, they can. They dismissed me. Said it had sold out to the bosses. Oh, can I believe my hair hears? <laughs> Betty, it's not the moment, love. How did they know about our arrangement? Albert told them. You great donkey. Well, I'm not breaking in a new shop steward at my age. Cousin or no cousin, out he goes. Gaffer, you do not seem to understand. You can't out him. He is the new shop steward. <laughs> That's all we need. Oh, well. We'll have to get the other the lads to out in them by, by turning them against him somehow. What's the, what's the worst thing a shop steward can do, Harry? I mean, apart from actually working. <laughs> well, it's difficult to say. I mean, his political beliefs could be written down in the back of a full pay packet. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. What, what would happen, though? What would happen if Albert brought him out on strike for less money? Are you joking, Gaffer? They would club together to give him a headache as a going away present. <laughs> Why should he be so daft? Well, perhaps he, perhaps he might think that their jobs depended on it, only he wouldn't be able to explain it to him at the time. Do you have to be so devious? Can't you conspire in plots of one syllable, like break his leg? No, just hang on a second, Betty. This is going to be good. I give all the lads here an enormous pay rise, right? Now, this should make Albert about as suspicious as Red Riding Hood when she's heard the wolf's going to jump her hair in gravy. We find somebody who Albert trusts implicitly to tell him in strictest confidence exactly what I'm going to do. Which is what? Well, that I'm a bit short of money, which is very nearly true. And that I'm going to, I'm going to sell this firm, but I'm going to buy another company, and I'm giving this big pay rise so this place is uneconomic and good skin. And then I'm going to get the lads from here to come and work for the new firm for less money, and I'm going to work it both ways anyway because I shan't have to pay their redundancy payments. <laughs> That is sheer genius. I know. It beats me why I never thought of it before. <laughs> anyway, you, uh, you get the gist. That's just gist? And who's going to whisper that little aside into Albert's ear? And what are you looking at me for? What are you looking at her for, Gaffer? Because Albert thinks that Betty's the right little darling. So Betty's just got to pretend she thinks that Albert's the greatest thing since fried black pudding, and she is going to <laughs> reveal all in the cause of true love. Oh, hold it right there. I'm revealing nothing to that super cocky, chauvinistic big head. I thought you were going to sing a song for a minute. <laughs> Come on, Betty, surely I can count on your loyalty. I can't even appeal to your better judgment. Go on, then I'll bribe you. <laughs> That's different. I'll settle for a free hairdo at Monsieur Charles. Right, you're on, provided you make a good job of it. Oh, don't worry. I'll convince Albert that I'm besotted by his charms. I'll have him bending over backwards. That won't be a pretty sight. <laughs> no, don't get too ready, man. That typewriter's just been serviced. <laughs> I tell you what, I'll, uh, I'll go outside and get ready to rush him with the glad tidings. You get in the factory, tell Albert he's wanted in here. Hey. <laughs> oh, Albert. Oh, um, Harry said you wanted me. We're only with every fibre of my horsehair shears long. Pardon? Oh, Albert. From every first, from the very first heart-stopping moment I saw you standing there, like a god from ancient Greece, and you had ancient Greece on your overall. Now, don't look about! Oh, Albert, how I long to run my fingers through your brain. No, 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 stop oh, it! Stop it! it. Hello, hello, hello. And what are you two lovebirds up to? Lovebirds? Well, I don't think anything will happen to the eggs. Uh, take a memo, will you? Excuse me a minute. A memo to all the lads, please, Betty. Uh, just to say that because of the new contract, I'm giving them all a 20% pay rise. 20%? Oh, go on then, Albert. Make it 22 and a half. 22 and a half? Well, hell, you're a hard negotiator. All right, 25. <laughs> 25? Wait till I tell the lads what a real shop steward's managed to negotiate on their behalf. He's as happy as if he was in his right mind. <laughs> how did it, uh, how did it all go? Like soup through a sock. 
He gave me the brush off. I knew it. You've lost your lure, girl. <laughs> I thought it for a long time. You're over the top. Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, yes, you are. I bet I could still turn you on. If you might turn me on, you'd never get me started. <laughs> Come on, you know you fancy me. Don't start something you can't finish. Come on, you jolly green Look. giant. No! Oh! oh, God! Get off! <laughs> Betty! <laughs> Bert! <laughs> You're sitting on me keys. Oh, <laughs> oh bet me back. Your back. You've got a yellow streak running. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Oh, you... no. But it, but it, like. Now stop it. You'll have me coming into season. Get off. <laughs> hey, the, uh. Hey, what's all this? <laughs> oh, no, it's, uh, um, uh, first aid, Albert. <laughs> um, uh, we do it a lot. I'm just showing Betty how to give the kiss of life, you know. Are you trying to kid? You think you can fool me, don't you, by getting Betty to make up to me so I wouldn't suspect that you two are at it? When I decide what you mean by at it, I shall probably punch holes in your earlobes and file you in the Get Lost ledger. Betty, that is no way to talk to the light of your life. Well, the light's gone out. He's getting on my wick. Yeah, Betty, she don't mean that, Albert. She worships the very... You look what you've done now, you sex maniac. <laughs> oh, now we are in trouble. Make me an offer. <laughs> Don't just sit there. What's done is done. Uh, so shall I be when Doris finds out. If she does. Who's going to tell her? Albert. He was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. He's been stirring things ever since. <laughs> uh, what a mess. Harry sent to Coventry. Albert installed a shop steward. Me lumbered with a 25% pay rise nobody wanted in the first place. And, and Doris. I can't do it right lately. If I bought a prayer mantis, it would be the wrong denomination. <laughs> Don't answer that, it'll be Doris. Don't be ridiculous. Oh, hello, Mrs. Moffat. Tell her I've emigrated. Just deny everything. What a coincidence. I was just going to ring you. Will you hold on a moment? Right, if I can fix it for you, is the hairdo still on? <laughs> All right. Get it trained. <laughs> Everything's very clear now, Mrs. Moffat. Only I'm very worried about Mr. Moffat's behavior. Well, this morning he suddenly started kissing me. Thank you. Hey. Oh, he wants to be loved. He feels lonely and rejected. Oh, by you, of course. Well, what do you expect when you push your ex sweetheart throb second cousin twice removed into the firm? He feels he's gradually being pushed out of your life. Well, if you take my advice, you'll talk your husband into getting rid of Albert. It's the only way. Try to reassure him. Give him a great big cuddle. Not until I've checked the stresses on my ribcage, she doesn't. Oh, any time, Mrs. Moffat. If I can help somebody as I pass along, then my lying will not be in vain. <laughs> well, that's it. Your wife's going to talk you into giving Albert the elbow, and she gets the rest of you. I've got mixed feelings about that, no. <laughs> if only we could get the lads to turf out Albert. You've got no chance. Gaffer, you are a ruddy marvel. Have I ever denied it? <laughs> what finally convinced you then, Harry? The way you suddenly switched plans, you've got Albert to believe all that rubbish about you and Betty. Ha <laughs> ha, oh, brilliant! <laughs> Albert, he comes dashing in there and he's yelling, we are not going to accept that rise. The gaffer is trying to bribe us so that we won't tell about him and Betty. <laughs> well, when the lads finally stopped laughing and realised he was actually serious about it, they chucked him straight out in his two-foot rule. Gaffer, I do not know how you do it. Oh. No, well, I'm not too sure myself. <laughs> <laughs> Does this mean, um, I mean, you are shop steward I presume? Uh, on probation, provided I confirm that rise you offered Albert. You don't make me laugh, I've got a cut lip. 
<laughs> You've just told me that, that Al Albert refused that right, and he, he was the official at the time. I might have known you would try to wriggle out of it. Betty, get me the branch secretary on that phone. Hey, wait, who said you could use my phone in my time? There was a recent agreement between union and management about it. I know I was both at the time. Harry? Thank you. Brother Wagstaff, this is Brother Campbell here. Now, listen, brother, as branch secretary... Pardon? When? Oh, no. Brother Wagstaff has been suspended pending investigations into certain alleged irregularities. <laughs> It never rains, but yet it waters somebody's garden. <laughs> and his place has been taken by the member making the allegations, Brother Albert Ross. <sighs> Hang on a second, Brother Wagstaff. I think we are getting an idea. Wagstaff, Fred Moffat. Look, don't panic. Remember, you're British. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, forget I said that, then. Look, uh, don't worry about this other business. We'll deal with that. We're, we're experts. Can you be at the union office in the morning? That's the idea. Albert will receive an anonymous letter on our note paper. Uh, it, it'll just say, thanks for getting rid of Wagstaff, cousin, and there'll be ten crisp five-pound notes with it. Can you take it from there? I thought you might be able to. <laughs> hey! Hey, darling, don't be silly, because I'm not being generous. It'll be your 50 quid. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute, I've not finished yet. I'm not doing this for a note, you know. My fee, yes, my fee, will be an attack of amnesia on your part regarding any unguarded comments I might have made about our lads getting 25% rises. Agreed? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>